normally when we talk about uh, vaccinations, we are talking about um, initiatives or uh, drugs or if you know just for lack of a better word, yeah, things that we do take or get injected so that they can protect us from the disease, all right? So we always say when you take a vaccination, it doesn't mean that you won't develop the disease. Yes, you can develop the disease, but what it does, it makes sure that it reduces the severity of the disease. So for example, if you get um, maybe a flu vaccine, it doesn't mean you'll never get flu, but when you get flu, it is manageable, it's not severe. It doesn't uh, lead to most of the complications that we see with most of these illnesses. So I'll be talking about travel vaccines and uh, it's important because this is one of the initiatives to try and reduce disease incidence and spread to different countries, both for the traveller and where the traveller will be visiting. So the travel vaccines are helpful for both. So you, the traveller, you don't end up coming back home with what you didn't bargain for. And of course, you also don't pose a risk to people in the country you'll be visiting. First and foremost, we talk of, when we talk of travel vaccines, we try and um, kind of categorise them in maybe, I would say, three categories. Because you might find these vaccines go overlapping. So we usually talk of what, uh, what we call routine vaccines. So routine vaccines are what are expected in the normal schedule. So if you look at the normal uh, uh, schedule of baby vaccinations, you might find a few there. For example, flu. For someone who does their usual annual uh, checks and vaccines, flu would fall among them. Yeah? Then we have what we call the recommended vaccines. So these are normally based on where you're traveling to, what activity you'll be carrying out. Because for example, if let's say you're going for uh, maybe a fellowship or a, 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 you will be visiting hospitals or somewhere where you expect to come into contact with uh, people's fluids, then probably hepatitis B would be something you'd want to consider. So there are those we call uh, recommended vaccines based on where you'll be traveling to, the age, the season because I mean it's not the same when you're traveling in the summer uh, or when you're traveling you know in winter and the like yeah then there's what we call the um, required so these are the ones you'll find from the point of entry you'll be told for example you can't come into Kenya without a yellow vaccine uh, for example uh, the, the, the book to show that you've gotten the yellow vaccine yeah so the, those are the ones you know that internationally there are health standards that say this must be done if you're going to a certain place or a certain country and they'll be very strict about it and you'll not be allowed to enter if you don't have the said vaccination. Then we have quite a number of vaccines that could fall under the travel vaccines based on need, based on where you're traveling to, which country, where you're coming from, yeah, because it's not the same if let's say you're in a third world country like ours or if you've come from you know, uh, the West, where probably most illnesses have been well managed and taken care of. So among them, you'd have things like hepatitis A, hepatitis B. We have cholera, which is a problem right now. We have typhoid. Um, we have yellow fever and, and many others. Yeah, and flu is also part of them. What we normally say, you want to give time for the vaccines to actually work. So we say anything between four, six, and eight weeks, so that is one to two months, is a good time to give yourself to get vaccines before you travel. Because the whole concept, what happens when you take in a vaccine, uh, normally your body will, of course, register the new germs in your body and start creating what we call antibodies. Like now, the fighting, uh, the soldiers yeah, to come up and now try and fight this thing. In doing that, you're forming those things we call antibodies. So it, it forms like a memory or your, your body remembers that in the future, such that when you're um, introduced to the same kind of germs, it already has the backup, it already has the, the antibodies to now fight whatever it is. And that's what makes the severity of the disease not be, you know, that bad. Yeah? So um, what we say is you give it time 
so that now by the time you're traveling, you've already formed the required antibodies and hence you're immune. In terms of allergy, we, we say, of course, we can't put a blanket cover. I've always said in medicine, one plus one is not two. So we can't say everyone can get and everyone will be fine and all that, yeah? But generally, vaccines are safe. Generally, vaccines are safe. And yes, sometimes you can get, you know, a few side effects here and there. But we do have specific groups that we would probably uh, want to advise them on a case, you know, case to case basis. For example, in pregnancy, I mean, we know pregnancy is usually a, a very um, delicate time in a, in, a, in a lady's life, yeah? And you have two lives here that you have to look out for. That is the lady and also the child that this, this lady is carrying. So those are some of the special times that we say you'd want to actually now uh, evaluate based on the illness, based on the type of vaccine, because we have, for example, live vaccines where we are actually introducing the germs themselves or inactive um, and that now changes the story altogether. Well, when I say the live, I don't mean, you know, we're giving you the disease per se. Of course, it's a bit weakened, but yes, it is live. So you'd want to be very careful when especially giving these types of vaccines. Yeah. Then we have people who are immunocompromised, meaning um, these are guys who have illnesses that bring down their immunity so for example in hiv and aids um, there are certain illnesses like um, i would say diabetes sometimes can bring down your immunity uh, and many other illnesses so if you have illnesses that can bring down your immunity then that's also a conversation you want to have based on that person how are they at that time because they would also benefit from uh, the vaccines, but you also want to be very careful when you're giving it so that you don't cause more harm than good. But I would also advise uh, uh, people when traveling, it's important to find out, uh, we have very many sites uh, that can actually advise based on where you're going. For example, if you're going, you're traveling to Kenya, uh, you, there is uh, sites that you can access, especially government sites, uh, international health, sites which can advise on the vaccines that you should take for example anyone traveling to kenya now would probably benefit from cholera vaccine simply because we are having an outbreak that has been announced um, uh, recently so it is important to actually find out based on the country you're traveling to are there any outbreaks they're dealing with um, is it an endemic zone for certain diseases and do those diseases have vaccines such that you can protect yourself before you travel?